portfolio decision making introduction. In many cases, you don't have to be right on every decision, but only on average. In this case, portfolio decision making comes very handy. To exemplify, let's imagine that you have 10 million and you want to double its value. So to go from 10 to 20 million and you have two projects that you have invested in. Obviously, the easiest thing that you would expect is to double the amount of money invested in every project. So go from 5 million to 10 on every project. However, you can actually use the very same result by simply quadrupling the value of one of the project. And even if one of the projects goes bankrupt, so it doesn't bring you any positive impact, you will still manage to achieve your goal. So you can see in portfolio management, you spread the risk across the projects and you want simply to achieve the goal, not on specific projects, but rather on the whole portfolio of projects that you have invested in. Portfolio decision making requires a specific approach and I will define you in a minute how you can actually implement it in your organization. So the first step is, as always, listing the projects you want to consider. You name them and I would here obviously suggest to concentrate on projects that are using the same budget or addressing the same issue area. It doesn't make sense to mix projects that for different budgets are addressing different problems. Now, the, the second thing is to estimate the potential impact and probability of this actually happening. So first of all, again, you have to decide how we measure impact. Is it the NPV, a beta or something else? Then estimate this impact value for the project and also estimate the probability of reaching this goal. As we have discussed previously, you are not sure whether what you have estimated will be achieved or not. So at least try to estimate the probability of this happening. Once you have this, you can start grouping projects by risks. So for every project that you have listed in step one, just assign the main risk that may cause this project not to achieve its goal. Once you have assigned the risk to every project, you can group them by this type of risk. And the most important part in in this approach is the step number four, where you define the number of projects you will invest in. So here we want to define how much risk we want to take. We want obviously to spread the risk. So not to become a victim of one risk actually materializing and killing all our projects. So the first step is to define the total budget you can spend on projects then define the number of projects you will invest and also define some rules on risk spreading. So for example, how many projects you pick from the same risk group. The rest is simply implementing it by picking the right number of projects. Make also sure that you don't overspend your budget and make sure that not too much money is put into the same group of risks. So the last thing is the step number five, where we pick projects diversifying risk using obviously the things we have defined in step number four and step number three. So we want to have a portfolio of projects that are independent. So there's not the same risk repeated in each and one of them. And on average, those projects, the portfolio of projects gives us the expected result return. Let's move to the case study where we'll see how to apply this framework in practice. Portfolio decision-making case interaction. We will use the case study of a plywood producer to show you how in practice to use this framework. So just as a reminder, this plywood producer has three plans and they have identified 15 investment ideas, investment projects. We will use portfolio management to decide which one to pick. And we have to remember that we cannot spend more than 30 million euro on all of those projects. Let's go to Excel and see in more details each and every project and decide which one we will consider and which one we will postpone for later. Let's have a look at the details about the projects that we will consider. So please open a file attached to the lecture which is called Portfolio Management Plywood Empty. And in the Sheet Master, you will find a table of contents. We have here an overview of projects and then two analysis of those projects. And we're going to start with overview of projects. Here in column H, we've got the name of the project. Then in column I, we've got the main risk linked to the specific project. Then in column J, we put down how much money we have to invest. In column K, how much in terms of benefit they will generate for us within 10 years. And obviously we did NPV calculation. And we also attach something which we call the probability of success. Using this data, we have calculated the expected outcome from a specific project, which is calculated in the following manner. So we take the NPV, we multiply it by the probability of success. And from that, we deduct the investment needed. So in the case of, for example, the new drank machine, we know that we're going to roughly generate in terms of positive cash flow 25 million. We multiply by 90 and then from that we deduct 10 and in this way we get the 13 million. Obviously, you'll find projects like, uh, for example, here, the buying forest in Belarusia that has a negative expected outcome. 
And this may be due to the fact either to low probability of success or to high investment. You can also have simply low cash inflow from this investment. So this is what we did for each and every project. Now, what you have to do is to decide in column N whether we do specific project or not by putting one. So if I decide, for example, to do project number one, I just simply put one. And here your goal is, first of all, to spend no more than 30 million in total. So this will be summarized in column O automatically based on what you put in column N. And the second criteria you have to use, it's not to have two projects with the same risk group. So for example, if I do one project from supply risks, I should not do any other project that has similar risks. So for example, project number six, improving the sending machine should be off the table because it has the same risks. So I would simply spend too much money with the same risks. So two criteria in our portfolio decision making. One is don't spend more than 30. And the second one is don't have projects within the same risk group. And that's why we have put this here. You also have two additional analysis. So here we analyze the groups all together. So how many projects are in each and every group and how much money we estimate that we would have to invest in each and every group. And then we also analyze in depth the groups. So for example, you can see here that the supply risk group requires that 18 million, then it will give you back 18.3 million of expected outcome. And it consists of the following four projects. So we can actually look at them in details and use this to decide on which projects we should do or not. But decisions have to be put in the sheet projects in column N. So as always, I recommend pausing this lecture, solving the case on your own. And once you're done with that, please move to the next lecture where I will show you the solution to this case study. I hope you managed to solve the case on your own. And now we're going to go through the solution. So please open file attached to the lecture, which is called Portfolio Management Plywood. And here we're going to show you the solution to the case study. There are two ways to do that. In the first way, you can simply look at the analysis by groups and then pick the project which gives you the biggest return from the specific risk group and then put your decision in the projects sheet in column N. So for example, when it comes to supplier risk projects, we can see that there are four projects and the biggest expected outcome is for project number one, so the new drying machine. So if we were to invest within this risk group, we would pick this project. Then when it comes to management risk, you would pick this project and so on and so forth. So this is one of the way to solve this case. So go by groups and then pick the best project within a specific group. If you are spending too much in terms of money, then obviously you would most likely have to get rid of one of the projects. The other way to solve this case study is simply to look at the projects, then sort it by expected outcome and then to simply go from the biggest to smallest and then decide whether you do them or not. So let's mark the table, then go to data. Now we're gonna sort the data using the expected outcome and we're gonna sort them from largest to smallest. So now we have ordered them by expected outcome and we will go from the biggest to smallest and decide whether we do that or not. So the first one is easy because this is a M&A of competitor in Czech Republic. This is a management risk. We have no project, so we can actually do that. The second is a new drying machine. It's a supplier risk. So far, we have not selected any project that has a supplier risk, so we can also do that as well. The third one is something we cannot do. It gives us the third highest expected outcome. However, this is supplier risks. We already have one from that group, so we're not going to do that. Project number four. So adding workshop that will cut plywood in small pieces. This is a market risk project and we have no projects with that. So we can do that as well. Then the next project is again a supplier risk project. So we're not going to do that. The project number 11, continuing the work during Sundays as well. This is a recruitment risk project. We can do that because we have not done any project concerning that. And as you can see, we already spent more than 30 million so we might actually decide to cut down on that project. But let's go through the rest of the projects and see what else we can add. Market risk, we already have a project from that. Technological risk, we haven't got any from that group. So we can actually decide to build workshop for glue production. Then recruitment, we did. Market risk, we did. Technology risk, we did. We can most likely consider one with the political. However, given that the expected value is below zero, it would not actually have a big impact. So those actually last projects, we're just gonna skip. So as you can see, we have selected those projects 
and now the only thing is to decide which one we will not do and which one we're going to do. What we would have to do now is probably get rid of this project or that project. However, as we said, the requirement is to go below 30. If we get rid of project that is around uh, continuing the work during Sundays, we will reduce the requirements by 3 million. If we actually get rid of that project, this will be 2 million less. So if we want to get below 30, we would most likely have to get rid of that project. And then, as you can see, we are in target. So we have selected the project, which give us the highest return within the 30 million that we have to spend. So this is what we will most likely do. And this is one of the way to approach this. Have a look at that. And if you have a different solution, please let me know. And I will have a look at that. And I will give you my feedback. But generally speaking, as we said, we look at projects, we look at the expected outcome, we sort them from biggest expected outcome to lowest. And then the additional criteria is simply not to have two projects within the same type of risk. Obviously, you can define maybe not having one, but two. But the generally speaking, the idea is to somehow diversify your risks. And this is what we tried to do in this case study. Let's have a look when it makes actually sense to use portfolio decision making. So obviously the first condition is that the outcome is unpredictable. The other thing we have to have in order to use this is that we want to diversify risks. So we know that the, the risk exists and we cannot mitigate them in an easy manner. Therefore, we would not rather put all X in one basket. And we simply want to be exposed to different risks, not to have one risk endanger the whole company. Portfolio decision making obviously requires you to have a lot of investments so the risk can be spread, preferably of roughly the same size. If you have a lot of projects, but some of them are huge, whereas the rest are small, you may find yourself in difficulty to spread your risk because the failure on big projects will drastically change the outcome of your portfolio and the overall goal will be difficult to reach. So preferably they should be roughly the same size or at least you should have plenty of projects. Another thing that is important is that the main sources of risks are actually beyond your control. If you have a lot of risks that you can actually mitigate, then in most cases makes more sense to mitigate them rather than diversify the risks. But here we are actually talking about risks that we cannot really control. Therefore, we want to make the company more sustainable by not exposing them to, to one type of risk. Another important thing is that the investments are not depending on each other. In some cases, you may think that you have diversified your investment and mitigated risks. However, due to some interdependencies between projects, you can have a domino effect. So one project that fails may impact the rest of the projects that you have also decided to do. So the portfolio decision making assumes that they are actually not depending on each other. If they are depending on each other, you should actually consider them within the same risk group. And the last condition is that you use the same resources for the investments. If you are using different resources, then the portfolio decision making should be done within the same resource. So for every resource independently. So in short, you have to have an unpredictability. You want to diversify your risk, your investments. You're doing a lot of investments and the risk is beyond your control. And most of all, the investment cannot be interconnected because otherwise you will end up having a domino effect.